morning welcome to morning manor this is the day the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it welcome back we're so happy that you have joined us on this day let us bow for a word of prayer father we bless you we thank you for this privilege of coming before your presence with thanksgiving and into your course with praise god as we study your word on today open our hearts and minds to receive that which you have prepared for us. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Open your Bibles to the book of Exodus, book of Exodus chapter number three, a familiar chapter, a familiar story, and we want to deal with the life of Moses uh, we've studied this before, but I was led to come back to this book uh, because uh, I want to challenge you today and the next week or so. We want to talk about uh, can God use you to make a difference in the world? Can God use you to make a difference in this world? That's the challenge. Uh, why are you not? Why are you not letting God have all of you that you can be a world changer? So let's look at the book of Exodus chapter number three. And I'm going to read uh, the first uh, 10 verses, Exodus 3, 1 through 10. And I'm reading from the... New King James Version of the Bible. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backs of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then the Lord said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off from your feet. For the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptian oppressed them. Come now. Therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Can God use you to make a difference in this world? That's a great question. That is a relevant question. I think you should constantly seek the face of God. And as you seek the face of God, you should ask God, what is it, Lord, that you would have me to do? What is it, Lord, 
that you would have me uh, to do. We are all familiar, when you look at this text, we are all familiar with the story of Moses. Uh, we've read this story and it's found in the book of Exodus. Um, the king of Israel, or the king of Egypt rather, uh, put the children of Israel in bondage because they were more mightier and uh, they were powerful. If you look at Exodus chapter 1, uh, verses 8 through 14, uh, the king of Egypt despised Israel because God was blessing Israel. So how did the people of God, the children of God, end up in Egypt? And in order for you to understand how they ended up in Egypt, you have to follow the story of Joseph, and we know how Joseph was the son of Jacob. His brother sold him into slavery. Joseph ends up in Egypt. He becomes the prime minister of Egypt, and he brought his family to Egypt when there was a famine in the land, and uh, his family moved to Egypt because Joseph took care of them. They settled in the area of Egypt called Goshen, and God was with Israel. Israel grew uh, at this point uh, through the centuries, through the years. They grew to become a great nation, and even in the midst of their enemies, God had his hand on his people. Now, you need to understand that no matter where you are, God will take care of you. You can be in the midst of your enemies. You can be in a strange land among strange people. Yet God has promised us that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. And so God took the descendants of Jacob, and God multiplied them. And the people of Israel grew, they prospered. Uh, but keep in mind, keep in mind that your enemies, listen to me, your enemies cannot handle the blessings of God being upon your life. They can't handle that. They, they hate that. And so uh, they, their enemy, they, your enemies, they cannot deal with the fact that you are blessed and you are highly favored of the Lord. And so the people of God were so blessed that the king of Egypt told the midwives of Israel to kill all male babies that were born in the land. What a sad way. Uh, this, this king was so hateful and despised the people of God. He despised the blessings of God that he instructed the Hebrew midwives to destroy every male child born in the land of Egypt. But you know what? The midwives did not do what Pharaoh commanded. What a great testimony of these women who stood for what they believed in and were not heed to the desires of the king. And so since the midwives of Israel did not heed the command of Pharaoh, the Bible says that God blessed these women. God gave these women uh, houses uh, to live in, and even more, he multiplied Israel continually. And so the king of Israel decided that he would send out a decree that every male child that was born in the land would be thrown into the river and destroyed. But God had a plan already in place. Remember, Whatever the enemy does to destroy you, 
God already has a plan that will work in the favor of his children. No matter what you are going through this morning or today, uh, God has a plan to bless you wherever you are. And so we're introduced uh, to Moses in chapter 2 of the book of Exodus. We were introduced to this child that is born. His mother uh, was of the house of Levi, and she had a child. And because of Pharaoh's decree, Moses' mother hid this baby when she saw he was beautiful and he was a good child. She hid him for three months. When she could no longer hide him, uh, she made this basket and she made it waterproof. You have to read chapter two to get the details of this story. And she gave this baby to her daughter, Miriam, and Miriam put this, this basket, this wicker type basket that was sealed and waterproof uh, near the banks of the river. And she hid herself to see what was to become of this baby. God, in his infinite wisdom and his divine providence, uh, allowed the daughter of Pharaoh to find this baby. Pharaoh's daughter uh, went to the river to bathe. She and her servants, she notices, she hears the baby crying. She finds this baby. She sees that this is a Hebrew baby. And she decides to raise this child as her own. When she sees this baby, uh, the Bible says in chapter 2, she has compassion for this baby. God will give you favor, not only from himself, but God will allow your enemies to give you favor. And so she drew this baby out the water, and uh, Miriam was hiding to see what would happen, Moses' sister. And Miriam asked, Pharaoh's daughter, do you need me to find someone to nurse this child? And the daughter of Pharaoh agreed, yes, go find me a nurse. And Miriam, Moses' sister, goes back home, gets Moses' mother to, to take care of Moses, to really raise Moses. And what was interesting, uh, Pharaoh's daughter told the mother of Moses that I will give you wages to nurse this child. Look how God blessed the household of Moses in the midst of all of this chaos. Pharaoh's daughter gives this baby favor, hires Moses' mother to raise this baby, and Moses was blessed and influenced by his own mother. I tell you, the Lord will let your enemies take care of of you. Isn't that exciting? The Lord will let your enemies take care of you. Now, the word Moses, the name Moses, uh, this name was given to Moses, to this baby, this three-month-old baby. The name was given to him by the daughter of Pharaoh. The name Moses means to pull out or to draw out of water. And because she found the baby in the river, she named him Moses. And that's where his name came from. So Moses was reared in Pharaoh's house. He was trained by Pharaoh's teachers. He ate from Pharaoh's table. And he was groomed to be a leader of the Egyptian people. But God had other plans because God was about to use Moses to make a difference in the world. Listen, that's our time for today, but we're not out of content, even though we're out of time. But won't you read uh, Exodus chapter 3 uh, this next week as you prepare to come back and finish this lesson, can God use you to make a difference in the world? God bless you, and I'll see you next time for our morning manna.